What began as an informal meeting between a handful of African-American physicists in 1972 has now grown into a major scientific society of African-American physicists with a conference of several hundred attendees. In fact, the 2004 NSVP conference held jointly this year for the first time with the National Society of Hispanic Physicists attracted a record-breaking 600 African-American and Hispanic physicists from around the United States. I'm Dr. Beth Brown. I'm an astrophysicist. I work at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. My name is Stefan Alexander and I am a postdoc at Stanford University and the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center. My name is Stephen Avery. I'm an instructor at University of Pennsylvania, Department of Radiation Oncology, Medical Physics Division. My name is Lisette Soldan. I am from Howard University, fourth year graduate student in the Atmospheric Science Program. My name is Charity Williams. I'm an undergraduate at Virginia State University where I'm studying physics. My name is Carol Scarlett and I'm a postdoc at Brookhaven National Laboratories and I'm working on a rare symmetry violating processes experiment called COPIO. Uh, we're hoping to answer some of the questions of how our universe developed into a purely matter state and instead of having both matter and antimatter. This year's conference took place in the heart of Washington, D.C., just a few blocks from the nation's capital. Held once a year, this conference is an opportunity for many of these physicists to come together to share and discuss their research work. We've done these experiments where we just look at the silica spheres alone, we saw no transient transmission. When we look at the catalyst alone, because it's a metal, there is a process for coupling into surface plasmons, which could possibly contribute. Establish new collaborations, and of course, reconnect with old friends and colleagues. This is kind of like a recharging event for me to be around a large number of African-American physicists, you know, people that you might not only see but once a year. And to, to be around a group of people that are all about, you know, doing things that they love to do, things that are related to what I love to do. In keeping with the theme of global reach and universal excellence, the 2004 conference focused on extending networks of friends, colleagues, and collaborators, not just in the United States, but also in Africa, the Caribbean, and in Latin America. First on the conference agenda was a visit to Capitol Hill, where members of the NSBP and NSHP met with key members of the Congressional Black and Hispanic Caucuses to discuss issues of critical importance to both organizations. The discussions primarily address the continuing systematic difficulties that many African American and Hispanic physicists encounter in procuring government research funding. Leaders of both organizations also raise concerns over the hiring practices at and limited access to government research laboratories and facilities. The Hispanics in physics represent probably about 4% of the graduate student population and then that reduces down to 2% in the workforce, this includes academics, uh, includes the laboratories, uh, includes the industrial, the industrial laboratories. The primary employer of physicists in this country are, is the U.S. Department of Energy. Our nation has invested heavily in so-called national user facilities. One of our goals is to make sure that African Americans have a presence at those user facilities. Oftentimes, HP, HBCUs are strapped for cash, and it's difficult to invest in state-of-the-art scientific facilities. It is my view, not necessarily that of HBCU, that that's an, the investment in facilities isn't necessary. We invest every April 15th in facilities. These facilities reside at our national laboratory, and we need to get access to them as users. Besides their efforts on Capitol Hill, NSBP members have also taken an active role in promoting physics education and research in Africa. Dr. Charles Magruder, an astronomer by training, is working on setting up telescopes in several African countries to include South Africa, Namibia, and Nigeria, among others. The society and me working with the society is spearheading major efforts that will have significant impact on, on science in Africa. I was invited to Rwanda to um, talk about putting a telescope uh, in Rwanda, a research telescope. Again, the purpose is to get young people from Rwanda 
interested in science engineering to get an instrument there where they can do frontline research, something from Rwanda. Nigeria has just formed a federally funded center called the Center for Basic Sciences. The director of that center, Dr. Pius Okeke, is a colleague of mine, an old colleague of mine from my days at the University of Nigeria, where I taught for 12 years. And we worked together then, and he would like to work with me to put a telescope in Nigeria. As chairman of the Edward Boucher Abdusalam Institute, Dr. Charles Brown has helped establish collaborative relationships between African and African-American physicists. The mission of that institute was to uh, support the development of physics and high technology in Africa by uh, having conferences, um, creating collaborations and exchanges amongst professionals, and also training students. This year's conference also had several dynamic keynote speakers. Dr. Freeman Robowski, renowned for his mentoring efforts and for keeping more students of color in the fields of science and engineering, captivated the audience with his charisma and enthusiasm. But here is the fundamental question as I talk tonight about inspiring students to do their best. What do we have to do to have so many people in your categories, faculty and students, undergrad and grad, that this room can begin to hold the numbers who would come? We must teach children, we must tell ourselves, college students and grad students, we must focus on the work, we must understand that to be the best, you do everything you can do, you work as hard as you can work, you give it everything you have, and when you think you can't do any more, you take one more step. That is to be the best. And Dr. Kutso Michele, president of the National Research Foundation of South Africa, invoked much optimism about the future contributions of black South Africans to science. Indicating to you that there's the culmination of a three-year project uh, that was started by conversation between Charles McGrude and myself uh, in South Africa.